Philip Buzz Fuchs, Program Director of the Social Contract Revisited. revisited. Uh, he teaches labor law at Ono College. This is for the opportunity. Um, and thank you, Penina, for allowing me to learn much more than I did um, about mandatory retirement. Um, um, because Pina ran out of time a bit, um, I'll, I'll try to kind of uh, tweak a bit uh, and um, highlight some of um, the very interesting arguments that she made and perhaps recategorize them. So I guess what we do. Um, lawyers, we recategorize. We don't actually do things. We just recategorize stuff. Um, so I think uh, I found uh, three lines of argument for and against mandatory retirement in the paper. Some of them in, in the in the proper chapter of arguments, but some of them kind of dispersed throughout. Um, one is company based. Um, the obvious uh, argument. Um, in favor of mandatory retirement is that workers are less productive and less capable and therefore less efficient and more costly. Uh, the counter argument is factually this is not necessarily true and if, if it's true um, it is offset by experience, by stability, by less absenteeism, by more loyalty which means less turnover um, and therefore the cost benefit, the very uh, kind of uh, pure cost-benefit analysis, very cynical perhaps, cost-benefit analysis doesn't necessarily lead that way. Um, a very interesting one for me and one that I'd like to focus on, uh, you know, I'll focus on, uh, I'll, I'll leave it for last. Uh, the second one is society in general, so that would mean basically other workers. Um, this actually Panina did, did touch on um, that current old workers actually benefited uh, from the same policy when they were young workers, right? Old workers then moved on um, and, and gave them more room. And the counter is the, the lump of labor policy uh, that you mentioned, which means that there's no fixed number of jobs uh, in the economy. Moreover, um, something I think that you didn't mention is that this was the same argument once made towards women and towards um, other minorities. You know, if you let them in the in the labor market, then what will become of white men? And that found, was found to be either false or inappropriate or probably both. Um, and lastly, which is mo most interesting for me, and I'd like to kind of uh, hear what you have to think about my thoughts on this, is the individual worker, and I think this is where the, whole, the crux is, uh, that uh, the, the argument in favor of mandatory um, uh, retirement is that it means a dignified exit for the worker, less stress, less monitoring uh, performance. And the counter argument is actually that the presumption uh, uh, is, is the humiliating aspect. And actually I'm not sure I'm convinced. I'm not sure I'm convinced by the way you reject the former and I'm not sure um, I'm convinced by the embrace of the latter. I'll, I'll say something about it. Um, about the former, I actually do think, um, um, I told this to you see uh, kind of during the break, um, I was just, we're in the season of conferences now in Israel, so I was just in another conference, um, and a, at dinner, uh, one professor from Columbia said, she st spoke with a doctoral student, and she said, did you have the chance to study with Professor whatever, Schwartz. It wasn't Schwartz, but Professor, uh, for the sake of it. Um, and uh, he was a beloved colleague. He uh, passed away last year at the age of 93. And they both kind of reminisced, and he was a lovely professor, very knowledgeable, etc. cetera. Um, but they both agreed that he went on two, three extra years uh, more than what was uh, perhaps ideal and he kind of forgot stuff and uh, even embarrassing things like he fell asleep during class, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, assume, and you know, it's university and it's Columbia and he's one of the most beloved and esteemed professors there. It's not Schwartz, uh, but Schwartz is still alive. And, and, uh, but um, but um, imagine that there was a monitoring performance. Imagine that this is not a university, but a, a less hospitable, more economic uh, kind of structured place. And someone comes up to him and says, you know what, we've been hearing comments and you're actually, you know, clients are calling us up and saying that you're falling asleep and you're not remembering and you're not at your best. And actually, this is time to go now. 
Um, so when, when Penina talks about in her article about uh, when you talk about uh, treating people as dead wood or dead weight, um, uh, perhaps I actually don't think that it's the um, the presumption that leads to people thinking that you know they've done their share and they should go. It's actually that very very I think I would think uncomfortable if I can imagine it uncomfortable conversation when people say actually you're not living up to. Uh, what we expected, um, and, and you've done your share, and your performance is deteriorating, and uh, you're not worth it to us. And when I think about, you know, um, Lilach mentions Adler's um, conference in his retirement, it's actually a series of six different uh, conferences when the president of the National Labor Court retired. 60, it looks like, seems like 60, um, and all were joyful, and all were embraceful, and all were grateful, and nobody uh, considered him, you know, dead weight, and he's done his shares, and everyone, you know, uh, were talking about, uh, everyone was talking about everything that he can, he can expect to do um, in his retirement, and it was very, very clear that he's leaving at 70, by the way, not at 65, because judges retire at 70, at the height of kind of his uh, intellectual kind of potential and capacity, um, and he has, will have time now for families and for, you know, private practice even, et cetera, et cetera. And none of it, and, you know, my mom retired uh, a few years ago and it was the same, was very celebratory, et cetera. So, I, I, and I'm thinking about things I see on TV when, you know, cops retire, when you see that. None of it, I, I can't even think about, imagine that the humiliating aspect of it all. Now, that being said, I do agree uh, that the retirement age, which I don't think you mentioned, but obviously, as we all know, is, it was, is 65, um, or historically paid 65, at 1935, is anachronistic and not relevant, etc. Et but think about a retirement age that's 75 or 80, right? Um, that at the, then you... So is the problem really, as you know, as your, the title of your paper says, is the problem really mandatory retirement? So I'm building on that, right? Um, so you, you, you shift away the monitoring performance, and you say, well, you know what? Say everybody kind of moves on at 80, and we're, and we're celebrating that event, and it's a kind of a rite of passage, like our bar mitzvah or whatever. I can't see. Okay, I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, so I'm not sure that this is um, um, necessarily the problematic. I do agree, and, uh, and I think you should focus more, kind of when you revise perhaps, um, I do agree, I think you should focus more and perhaps move it up, because you reach towards the end of the paper on the financial possibilities, and I don't think you even got there. The financial possibilities of, the old, of old age are very, very severe and a serious, serious issue. Um, and actually, I'm not sure that that doesn't lead, that that actually leads to, towards the abolishment of mandatory retirement. Because what we perhaps may be is, if we abolish mandatory retirement, then people may be expected to work more, right? If you abolish mandatory retirement, then, hey, why stinge on the, on the pension fund? You can keep on working. Um, you'll see a further retrenchment of pension funds because people will be expected uh, to work more. Now, I, I agree with, you know, the kind of social de democratic uh, angle or philosophy underlying the paper saying we should, we should increase the possibilities that pensioners have and, and more and put more into the financial uh, capabilities of, of pensioners, etc., etc. I'm all in favor, but what I think the real politic of it is, is once you allow people, well, allow, the, what, once the presumption is that most of the people can and perhaps do work uh, towards uh, 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 an older age, you'll see a retrenchment in public pensions for sure, and government pensions for sure, and perhaps even in the private pensions. I'll stop here. Um, I'll try to say it briefly. Uh, two, two short comments. The first one is about the comparative part, which I found very interesting. Um, I think that it's not enough to compare only the man, the um, 
mandatory uh, age or if there is a mandatory um, arrangement, we need to, to look also if there is uh, um, job security arrangements uh, in the states and what are the uh, pension arrangements because I think it's only it's a very small part of the picture. That, that's the first comment. The second comment is I was very, very interesting to um, I, I wanted to hear much more about the um, results of your uh, um, of the um, dignified life approach, and in the paper it's very short and also uh, in, in your talk. But what I understand that there aren't a lot of situations that you are really uh, um, you really will uh, uh, say, uh, okay, here we don't need uh, here uh, mandatory uh, retirement uh, is okay, because I think in in, in most cases, uh, you can show that you can, uh, there are specific individuals that will uh, be okay as pilots, as cops, as everything. So I think it's very, it will be a very limited uh, exception. Yeah, I want to follow up on, <laughs> on your first comment. Um, I think that when you do this comparison between countries, you have to take into account the labor market, the re employment relationships, and other arrangements like the pension uh, uh, system, because otherwise, I don't know if you compare really um, equal <laughs> settings. And if you have a country with a tenure, for example, on the job, then it's very difficult, <laughs> very difficult to get rid of people, <laughs> so to speak, uh, than in a country that you can fire everyone whenever. Uh, so this is one comment. And the other one relates to uh, the two of you, actually, is that I have the feeling that most people don't want uh, to raise the uh, age of uh, retirement. And we saw it in France. And I think that... And let me just, let me just finish. Um, we have an excellent example in Israel because women had a choice. Mm -hmm to either retire at 60 or 65, and the vast majority decided to, to take the earlier point of time, even though it's not very economically smart, because women do not accumulate enough years of experience, and, and the pension is very low. So people don't really want to work so, so, uh, so much, and, and what Amir said is, Very interesting papers, thanks. I have a lot of comments I will give to you afterwards. Uh, the first one, I think that in general, in my opinion, mandatory retirement age is not probably compatible with what is going on in pension system reforms. Because if you want people to work longer, you cannot put them on retirement. So, the, following to this, there is the question that you, you said there are two exceptions. One is uh, for workers in some uh, particular job occupations. Uh, um, that is an important point, is what we call penibility, uh, so the hardest job, uh, hard jobs. Uh, but uh, there uh, is the question, is it really to the pension system to settle these things or is to work in conditions not to leave job uh, workers in this uh, occupation for long, make them switch to other, to other occupation or just having better condition of work or is uh, and uh, if you accept the the idea of a mandatory retirement age as I mean said uh, in some cases what is the age limit how to fix the optimal age limit to 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 retirement age and then I think that in some countries really the characteristic of the pension system that make you work longer so uh, if you don't have uh, if you look at what's going on uh, on the statistics on uh, effective retirement age uh, you you see that countries that have uh, really very low public benefits or the public uh, part of the pension system is very small they work longer they need to work longer in this case put in, they can't for yeah so putting them on retirement age means uh, in, a, a huge impact on the, on the adequacy of their retirement incomes. So I will uh, talk about. And another thing I didn't say, the, the trend, the only thing, because uh, you stopped me before, the trend is really towards a minimum pensionable age and not mandatory retirement. Just in one minute, I think we should distinguish between um, 
pensionable age eligibility and mandatory time. And I'm only talking about the fact that there's laws or policies or places where the employer can dismiss a worker, not condition on any pension eligibility or anything, just say, okay, you're 65, you're 67, go home. No age discrimination. That, that's it. Now, I, I, I totally agree with you that, and especially because of the shift from um, 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 DB to DC pension plans, it doesn't make any sense. It's like a saving plan. I want to save more money. I want to work more. I'm just saying that if you want to have an arrangement where you want you want to be able to tell your worker you have to go home because you think it's a dignified exit or whatever, you have, as the employer, you have to give something in return. And this is what I want to, I want to see. So if there is um, um, a, a generous pension plan attached to it, if there's, a, and I'm, I'm much more for gradual retirement. Gradual, so it could be exit in different um, um, stages. It could be part-time work, and I want to see the employers involved because we talked about the fact that the employers are not responsible. I want to bring them back and say, okay, do you want mandatory retirement? You have to give something in return, such as extend uh, work opportunities, uh, involvement of those older workers in other forms. Just to take um, the, the example of this uh, distinguished professor, instead of teaching in class and falling asleep, be a mentor for young professors, for young uh, new faculty. Do something else, okay? This is what I'm... And I know you're hungry, so... No, I'm fine. <laughs> of course.